We're going to start off talking about cost accounting methods by discussing the all too important absorption costing versus. Boy, we have three names here. These names are all the same synonyms. So variable costing is the same as direct costing, same as contribution costing. Much more likely to hear variable or direct, but just know that it's also known as contribution costing. All right. So what are these two methods? It seems uh, a little complex, doesn't it? My job is to be here to tell you it really isn't. Not at all. I'm here to demystify it for you. It's sort of the same as what we've seen with spoilage and product versus periodic costs. One method capitalizes costs and the other method expenses costs. It's almost as if this is just really important. They want you to know it. Uh, there actually are a good amount of questions about this. I would definitely know it. All absorption costing is, and this is another topic that was never explained to me too well. And it was just, oh, very lofty explanations and um, super ed, uh, theoretical and PhD level explanations. But all absorption costing is, it's a method where you capitalize your fixed costs under variable or direct or contribution. And I'm just going to call it variable or direct. Um, there's a lot of names for it. You just expense fixed costs. That's all it is. All it is, everything below this is just an effect of what happens. And I'll explain them. Again, under absorption costing, say we're making chairs in a factory. This doesn't affect materials, labor, or anything. I mean, if there's fixed costs, sure. But if we have fixed costs, such as $1,000 a month to keep the lights on, those are actually again capitalized to our chairs, right? Our inventory. And we add that to the value of the asset. Whereas if we use the variable direct method, it we expense those fixed costs. All it is. Treatment of fixed costs are capitalized on the balance sheet or expense in the income statement. Now let's think about the effect, right? Again, really everything we'll see here is just related to that. Now the fixed cost impact to net income, well, there's no effect to net income because it gets capitalized, goes in the balance sheet, Balance sheet doesn't affect net income. However, if we use the variable direct method, these fixed costs are an expense and expenses reduce net income. Makes sense, right? Makes sense. And these are all based on multiple choice questions you could have. So went through, took a look at many different multiple choice questions that have been asked. And you'll see, for example, when products, when production is greater than sales, right? What's the result? Well, under each method, I'll go through those, but just wanted to make a reference that. All of these are, I didn't just make this up for fun. This is all here because they relate to multiple choice questions. Well, inventory value is the highest under absorption costing. And that makes sense, right? Because you're capitalizing costs to inventory, thus adding the value of those costs to inventory. And now instead of having inventory of $500, you add $1,000 to it, so it's $1,500. And it's you know lower under variable direct costing because those extra costs are just expensed and not added to the value of inventory. Okay, here's just something to know. Absorption costing is used for external reporting. It's uh, used for gap, whereas variable direct costing is used for internal decisions. And you know why is this? Let's think about it for a second. Well, this is just the reason. This is just the one that's accepted, right? This is the the one that you're legally required to use for external reporting. But you probably want to use variable or direct internally because, yes, when you're making those chairs, I mean, are you really going to account for those electricity costs in the value of the chairs? I mean, they're not necessarily directly related to it. So this method very much more looks at just the asset as a whole, right? The costs of the process as a whole um, and what should be related to it. So this gives you a more clear picture of just the costs that go into making the chairs rather than you know adding everything into external reporting method. Uh, here's just, again, built on another multiple choice question. Uh, product or inventoryable costs. These are capitalized, right? These are the all costs of goods manufactured, whereas what are product or inventoryable costs under the variable direct method? Well, that would be all costs of goods manufactured except for fixed overhead. And we remember that cost of goods manufactured is our materials, labor, and overhead. and I'll 
refresh your memory with that wonderful chart of our formulas of cost of goods manufactured, cost of goods sold, all of that. Now let's think about these three statements here. When production is greater than sales, income is greater under absorption, income is less under variable. Okay, when production is greater than sales, meaning we make more than we sell, so cost of goods manufactured is greater than cost of goods sold, income is greater. Well, yes, if we produce more, we capitalize more, right? It all gets capitalized to production. It's greater than sales. We are not adding those fixed costs to expenses and our income will be boosted. Under variable or direct, if we produce a bunch, those fixed costs get expensed and income would be less under variable direct method as compared to absorption costing. Now, when production equals sales, so we make $1,000 worth of goods and we sell $1,000 worth of goods, the income level is the same regardless of what you use, right? Because we got rid of it all. There's nothing to think about. We just made $1,000, we sold $1,000 the income would be the same under both methods. Now, when production is less than sales, meaning, say, cost of goods sold is uh, $1,500 and production is $1,000, well, income would be less under the absorption costing method because this means we sold inventory from prior periods that we had sitting around, and income would be greater under the variable or direct method because we don't have to worry now about these expensed fixed costs, right? Because we're just using goods from prior periods. Take a second, re-listen to that if you need to, just think about it. You can also just memorize it. That works as well. And lastly, what are we using these each for? Well, you use these for larger inventories. If you have a larger inventory and you want to have a larger inventory balance, you would use the absorption costing method and variable direct method. If you have smaller inventory, and or you just want to have a smaller inventory, you would use the variable direct method. Well, we're seeing this again. You saw this in our fundamentals, the first cost accounting lesson. And I just wanted to bring it here to refresh your memory. Make sure checking in here that you're memorizing it. Make sure this is all down, right? What are prime costs? What are conversion costs? What belongs in cost of goods manufactured? Well, it's the three of these. Cost of goods sold, right? We have that formula as well. Take a look, enjoy it. Just wanted to remind you that it is quite important. Hey there, are you ready to not only pass your CPA exams, but truly understand and enjoy the material while studying? I know it seems impossible, right? Especially to enjoy the material. We'll do it together. Tap into the power of cpa.examprep.ai, where we've got personalized quizzes, multiple choice questions, memorization guides, flashcards, simulations, all tailored to your learning. Our adaptive study planning puts you on the fastest path to success and lifts you back up if you fall behind. Avoid wasting your precious time and money attempting an exam with a low chance of passing because who wants that? We want to get you through this process as quick as possible. Our exam readiness prediction lets you walk in with confidence knowing that you're prepared for success on exam day. Thankfully, there's no payment method needed to get started. So why don't you come join us? Visit cpa.examprep.ai and let's achieve your exam success together.